Ryan still, is up in this no, borough. it's not I've up in this borough. They're up I in have, this borough. Well, I'm uh, sorry, I have the figures of you. That's part of the problem. The let, 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 let me, okay. let me, yeah. let, let, right, one at a time. I, I do want to go to Simon Marcus uh, for the Conservatives at the moment. Uh, I was speaking to you earlier today. You actually think that one uh, idea that Margaret uh, Hodge has come up with is actually quite a good idea, and that's a change of emphasis with regard to the allocation of council uh, houses, the council houses going to people from the local area rather than people just coming into the area. But doesn't that pander uh, to those on the extremes, it's the policy. people that you say uh, support the BNP? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> I think what Margaret was speaking about was fairness and common sense. And I think it's very important in this situation to try to walk away from extremist views on, on any side and just have a look at a common sense solution to a lot of our anger and grievance. Now, I, I do obviously agree that things have gone wrong here and it's on Labour's watch, but we've got to be sensible. If someone's come out with a common sense solution, fairness in terms of social housing, people who've paid that, into this but system. But that's a scheme that would discriminate against immigrants, surely? No, it, it's not necessary. Can I, can I explain the scheme? Because it it's what I've been talking about. If you think about things like health, or if you think about education, those are uni they're open for everybody, and everybody should have the right to access them. If you come to something like social housing, public housing, it's a limited good. Not everybody has a council house or a housing association house. We know so all that, got, but your issue, so your issue to, is, Margaret, the, that you want, you want, as far as the uh, council allocation is concerned, yes. for these council houses to go to people from the local area who have been from the local area for a long period of and time. That, by its very definition, it will discriminate against people coming into the no, area, this, immigrants. But this, no, 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 this is, no, this is an issue of fairness, whereas the BMP come at it from racism. So mm. whether you're black or whether you're white, and there are a lot of black and Asian families who've been here for two to three generations who agree that we need a transparent, transparent open, fair system, it would be fair to them. Well, and I, that's I, the I, whole I, point. Uh, absolutely. That, that, is, that is the British National Party policy. What we've been no, saying here the is that National we need... Party Policy Margaret, I can tell you what my expel, policy is. It is no, to it's expel not, from Britain anybody who is of a different no, colour. No, we lost one. That's game. We, 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 know, we know you tell fibs, right. but let's leave it alone and actually talk about this policy. Nick, if I may the, say so, no, the person let, let, let's who talk is about really this good policy. about telling fibs is no, let's, you. let's talk about this policy, about the allocation of houses. We say it should be on a sons and daughters basis, which is so that people who've been here a long time, the people who paid into the system who are part of the local community, they should get the houses before other people, and that includes the West Indians and the Sikhs who've been here since the 1950s and 60s, which is, why, which, is, which is why they are voting for the and British the National Muslims Party Griffin? or the Christian Party and, Muslims, and not Mr. for you. So if, and the Muslims, if Mr. they've Griffin? been here and they're paying in and they're moderate and sensible, we treat them the same as anyone, everybody else. So, Simon Absolutely. Marcus, you're right on Nick Griffin's wavelength then, by the sounds of it. <laughs> no, that's not a very helpful thing to say. Well, no, I, I mean, think it's, it's I true listen. with regard to this particular issue. You're I don't think it is. called a dis disgusting piece of filth. Would you endorse that, Mr Marcus? Sorry? David Cameron called Nick Griffin a disgusting piece of filth. Would he support, you endorse it? He supports attacking my now people listen, with claw hammers. Listen, Would you listen, listen, it? please. It, it doesn't matter what we say. That's your piece of leader. And the people of Barking. Simon, make your point. Well, let me just say, I agree with it. Frank just gave a very good point. Frank, just give Simon Marcus a chance here. Sorry. Please. I don't want to start using unpleasant language. I mean, I think all of us have got a burden of responsibility here, please. All of us have got a burden of responsibility here to keep things cool, calm and civilised, yeah? There's a lot of tension out there and there is a bit of anger and I think we've got to lead by example and talk about the issues, not get insulting, everyone's hold to their opinion. We've got to keep cool, calm and collected and talk about the issues. And I'm not sympathising with any particular party, I'm sympathising with a good idea that Margaret has had. And now, can I just say we to want to get away from punch and duty politics and all this nonsense, especially embarking. I agree. So we don't lead by example here and show that we're mature and we're listening to people. And it's not about personalities and being spiteful to each other. If we don't set an example here, we're going to be in big trouble. So let's try and keep it calm. Well, OK. I mean, you say that you want to bring the debate uh, into a much more positive frame of mind. But with regard to pretty much all of the candidates, other than, of course, Nick Griffin, your campaigns are primarily based, from what we've seen here, on an anti-BNP ticket. You're telling people not to vote, vote BNP. Where's the positivity in that? Well, it's the way you do it. Now, <laughs> we're saying to people, we don't want you to vote BNP because we believe they are an extremist party. 
at their core they have some disgraceful views. Now, we're allowed to say that, as long as we're polite and we make our argument clearly, then that's the way things should be done. Other people can answer back in the way they choose. But the people and that's our decide. job here. Frank Maloney. Exactly. On May the 6th, yeah. the people will decide. If they want Nick Griffin in, they'll vote for Nick Griffin. If they want Margaret Hodge to do another five years, they'll yeah. vote for her. If they want Simon, if they want Dominic, if they want Frank Maloney, they will be do the people that will Nick decide. Do you think Nick Griffin has a realistic chance of getting it? I don't think he does. No, I don't think he does. On the, you know, on the from streets. From what you've heard from people I've heard on the streets. On the streets you know. I don't think he has any chance at all. Can I just, say, can I just say, because as, as the sitting MP, I haven't just been out on the streets for this last two weeks. I've been, I've been out on the street. I've I've been out on the I have been out on the streets for the last four or five years, uh, in all sorts of ways, listening to people. And I know what people talk to me and listen about. Of course, they're concerned about housing and immigration. You're you're right about that. But what they're equally concerned about is making sure that we recite the bus stop in a place that they. Okay. It, that we deal with the rubbish. Quite often in Westminster, we forget what matters in people's immediate environment. We're out of time. And that's a community that th matters. Thank you very much indeed. Margaret Hodge, gentlemen, thanks for thank speaking you. to us live and exclusive on Sky News.